With the end of January 2019 came the closure of the Nintendo Wii eShop. And while very few people are probably still playing a Wii as their primary game console, this was a big deal in the YouTube gaming community and led to a lot of people making videos discussing why physical media is so important and why these games we download are simply not meant to last. In a lot of ways, this was the first time that a game console store had closed and in that case resulted in the content that was available on it now becoming inaccessible in the original means that you were able to access it which was through that store now you could argue that the original Xbox had the same sort of problem as some of the DLC for the original Xbox is very hard to find online through secondhand means if not impossible things like map packs for Star Wars Battlefront 2 are difficult to come by because they are originally distributed on the original Xbox Live and there just simply weren't steps taken to back up that data necessarily very well on different websites. Nowadays though, I think the Wii is very different. You see, the thing about the Wii is all the games that were available on the Nintendo Wii eShop have been placed online. Now, I'm not going to tell you what websites you can find those on. I'm sure you can find it yourself. But the reason why I'm not going to tell you is because downloading those games off those sites would be technically, in a legal sense, considered piracy. But I think that the Wii eShop's closure brings about an important time to talk about that while obviously piracy will always be legally wrong, it brings about the question, is it morally reasonable to do in this situation? You see, here's the classic piracy argument. People say, if the game is not readily available and I can't give money to the developers, then obviously I should be able to just steal that game off the internet. This is a common argument that people have in the scenario of using piracy. Let's take, for instance, Kingdom Hearts, a game that has been re-released on every subsequent PlayStation mainline platform. You have Kingdom Hearts and Kingdom Hearts 2. They came out on the PlayStation 2. They get re-released on the PlayStation 3 and re-released on the PlayStation 4. If you want to play those games, it seemed like for the last decade and a half, you could walk into any given store and buy a new copy of a Kingdom Hearts game just simply because it's been re-released that many times on each subsequent PlayStation platform. In that case, it's very easy to buy that old game and give your money to the developers. We've also seen scenarios where games have been re-released digitally, and this has been something very big recently on the Xbox platform, where we've seen Xbox 360 games get moved on to the Xbox One. If you want to buy those games today, support the developers. You can still do that, even going back as far as some original Xbox games being available digitally on the Xbox One. So while obviously if you wanted to buy um, the original Star Wars Battlefront on a disc, the money wouldn't go to the developer. If you bought it through the Xbox Store on the Xbox One, not only would you be able to play it, the money would actually get back to the developer. Now let's take a look at a different scenario. Something like Simpsons Hit and Run, a very iconic game from about 15 years ago. This game is not obtainable on any current hardware. You also cannot walk into a store today and buy a new copy of this game. In other words, there is no way that you can buy The Simpsons Hit and Run and actually have the money get back to the original developer. So then the argument becomes a game like that, should you be able to pirate that game and feel morally acceptable to do that? And the answer to that argument is oftentimes no, and here's the reason why. You can go on eBay today and you can buy The Simpsons Hit and Run. Now of course, none of that money is gonna get back to the developer, but hey, you obtained the game in a morally ethical way by buying it on eBay. But now we have this strange third scenario that has arisen because of the Nintendo eShop. These games are not only not obtainable by buying them new, the money will not get back to the developer because you cannot buy them new anymore. They're also not obtainable in a second-hand method. You cannot buy these Nintendo Wii eShop games anywhere. You're not going to find them on eBay because they were never released physically for the most part. Maybe there were a few of them that were. But because they were never released physically, you can't buy a copy legally. They're just simply 
games that it became unobtainable and they're out there on the internet because people who enjoyed them at the time and there really weren't many Nintendo Wii eShop games that I personally enjoyed but some people enjoyed them or for the sake of just keeping the collection alive have stored these games online and it becomes a question is it morally ethical to download and play those games when there is no other way that you can obtain them and look I don't have the answer. Everybody's morals are going to be different, but I think that this begs an important discussion that the gaming community should have. But you think, how could a Wii play a game that you downloaded off the internet onto your computer and copied over? It just seems like it would have a way of blocking that. Well, the truth is it does. However, the Wii is very easy to mod and get these games playing on them. Now, the reason why many of these consoles that once were internet connected and now no longer because you know their service has ended, the updates for them have came to an end, it seems like every time that happens to a console, it becomes a platform for homebrew. And this is what's happened with the Wii. It happened with the PSP. It happened with the original DS. It happened with the original Xbox. I mean, I could go on and on. It seems like every one of these consoles that at one point used online updates to prevent the use of homebrew, once they stopped making online updates for it, once they disconnected the console from the internet in the way they did with the Wii many years ago, then it seems like those platforms become very open to homebrew. You get left with this final firmware version. The last firmware version that the Wii received is moddable. The last firmware version that the original Xbox received is moddable. When the console quits getting updates, it becomes very easy to have it stalled in time and have the opportunity for modders to come up with ways to exploit that software. So with the Wii so easy to mod and with the games so obtainable online, it makes me wonder why do we make such a big deal out of the store disappearing in the first place? If Nintendo wanted to make the money on the games, you would think they would just keep the store alive forever, but it's not profitable for them to do so. So for those of us that still want to go back and play these otherwise now unobtainable games, it just begs the question, is it okay to find them elsewhere and do so? When in the end, no money is going to get back to the developers, no money is going to get back to the publishers. It's just the only way to play the game. So is it acceptable? I would love to hear your opinion down in the comments section. Like I said, I don't have an answer and everybody's opinion is going to vary. But regardless, piracy will still be illegal. Thank you guys for watching. I'm Bailey, and I will see you in the next video.